Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this lesson, we're gonna set up our DAW to record in contact. So, I'm over in Pro Tools, but there's one thing I wanna tell you first that no matter what digital audio workstation you're using, whether it's Logic, Ableton, GarageBand, whatever, just listen to these concepts, okay? Because in Pro Tools, the buttons might look different, they might be in different places, but most DAWs work really similarly and so just take these concepts and apply it to whatever workstation you are using, okay? So let's dive right in. As you can see, I have 10 audio tracks and something that I don't usually do but I did this time is that I didn't even bother naming the tracks. And that's because when I was recording this Critali sample library, I used 10 microphones and the name is not really a great place to put descriptions of microphones and where I set them up in the room, I use something called comments. And so if you take a look over here, in the comments section, I actually named the track. And like, if you see it at, at the top, I wrote back room left, back room right, and then I wrote down the microphone that I use, AKG 414. That's how I kind of am keeping track of everything because this is a better place where I can see more of my text uh, whereas it would cut off if I tried to put all that info in the title. And so that helped me out when I was doing the mix on this Critali sample library. If you look at the next uh, three tracks down, you'll see I have my middle of the room mics, still uh, more AKG 414s, and then you'll see my close mics. I use some Sennheisers there. And then at the bottom, these three microphones are just extra fun microphones that I just wanted to include in the setup. So I told you about comments. Let's move over to our actual audio. As you can see, I have audio in groups of three. There's three regions, and then there's a gap, and then another group of three, and then another group of three. What I did is every note that I played, I took three takes. So take a quick listen. There's one note on the Critali, and then if I move over to this next region, it's the same exact note, just a new take. And just for being thorough, same note. But I played them three different times. And the reason for this is because in contact, we can do something called round robins. And what that is, is when you play a note back on the keyboard, it'll actually go through the different samples that you upload into it. And so that's a really cool feature. That's why I went the extra mile and I did this for this soft library because I wanted there to be some more range in the textures. In the next group of three, it's just the next note on the Critali. One note higher. And then I did the same exact thing. I recorded it three times, then the next note. You can see there's a lot of variation there. So that'll all be really great to include in our contact library. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Over here, when I recorded my hard forte sounds, I just recorded one of each note. So recording round robins is completely optional because contact within the program will also add some volume variation depending on what you do on your MIDI controller. So it's not exactly necessary to achieve different volumes if you're thinking, I need to have smooth volume from soft to loud. Contact already does that. Round robin is, is only if you want different textures, like different nuances on how you play the note. So going back to what I mentioned up here, I use markers to organize my session at a macro level. So if I zoom out, you'll see that over here in the beginning, what I showed you at first, I had my soft mallet played at a piano dynamic. And so that's why I call it soft and piano. Over here, I have my soft at a forte dynamic, right? So these would go into the same library because I have my soft texture and my loud texture. But again, it's not needed because contact within the program will already change the volume of your sample depending on how it's played on the MIDI controller. So you don't even have to do that either. Again, this is just to create depth in the textures of the instrument. 
And then going back to my markers, I made a marker to show that I have my hard mallet forte dynamic and I have my hard mallet. I couldn't decide if this was piano or mezzo, so it's kind of like a sort of softer take. And then over here I have my bowed crotales, and then I did kind of a bonus library of bowed symbol because it was really nearby and I was all set up. So using markers just to organize your groups of samples within a session is a really great thing to do. Another way to organize is by using groups. And it's not really organizing the types of samples. It's a way to use your DAW to kind of keep track of which mics are which. So if you notice, when I click on this top region here, two regions are highlighted. And that's because I grouped my back room mics together. And the way that you do that in Pro Tools is over here, you have your groups panel. So you can see I made my room back group. I made a middle group. I made a close-up group, and then I made a group of the Schoeps mics. So another really great group to make, and this is a default in Pro Tools, but you might have to make this a group depending on what DAW you use, but it's the all group. And so the reason why that's so great is, as, as you notice, I added fades on these samples up here so that they would fade out really nice. And so if I wanted to fade out a lot, of recordings at once using this all group and having that turned on I could just select one region everything gets selected and then I can fade every region at once and so that's a really great way to work faster so let's move over into the mix window so you can see I have my same tracks I have my comments turned on because I'm using the comments section as the name and Another great thing about groups that I wanted to show you in this mix section is that when you're actually mixing the samples into your final recording that you're going to export into contact, it's really valuable to have groups turned on so that when you move one microphone, let's say for example you move the right microphone in the back of the room, that the left back microphone will move equally and you'll keep your balance. So when mixing this library, let's say if I want a little bit of back room. I want just a tad of the middle of the room, but then I want my close mics to be nice and strong. And then my ribbon mic to go down in volume and then these Shops mics to be kind of middle as well. It was really easy to set that mix because I didn't have to spend time moving the right side and then the left side and trying to match them up all by hand. So that's just a quick tip about using groups when you mix. So one last thing before we end here, I want to show you something that is a little behind the scenes. In my Crotali library, I added some plugins, but you might notice that they're all bypassed, right? So I added some EQs and I was thinking, I want to put a low cut in there to just to take out some of the rumble and to clean it up. But I ended up deciding not to do that because Within contact, I can actually add a low cut in later within the contact program. So I didn't have to do it and actually print it to my audio that I was going to export. I can do it within the contact library. And I can also do that for EQ, compression, reverb. I can add all these different effects in within the library. So I decided just to bypass it when uh, exporting and when mixing my samples. So that's a a great overview of how I set up my session for contact libraries. In the next module, we're going to go deeper into post-production and how we fix some issues and decrease some of the problems in Pro Tools before we actually export our samples over into contact. So I'll see you guys on the next video.